Kristen, um, Yolanda, I about to say Dawsoni, I got it now. Hey, good people. The Gilberts, oh, y'all still love me, y'all still here? <laughs> Let me see if I can work this out. All right. Is it going to stay or is it moving? Good evening. I think I'm live everywhere I can possibly go. How's everyone doing? So good to be back in the land of the living. Do y'all remember me? I was going to come online tonight like this. <laughs> That's how I was going to come online and say, hello, I've been sleeping. How are y'all? Trying to see. Can anybody tell me if I'm on Facebook? I want to check in. I want to do a health, healthy check in. But I cannot tell from this new... program here if I am on Facebook. I'm trying to log in my own account and see. And I think I might be on a real slow connection on Facebook, so I may have to uh, get on my quicker. But I want to say hello. Come on. Give me some love. Are y'all back there? You are on Facebook. Awesome. Thank you, dear. I would like to know what some of these buttons are. Nisi, hi. I'm going to give you a few minutes to get on. Maybe I'll touch something before 10 o'clock. If not, I'll get back on this week. But at least I had a chance to say hello. I don't know why it's not showing me on. Uh, oops. Lord, don't let me do that. Thank you for the heart. Man, when you get off this thing, everything wants updating, everything wants attention. But I just feel so honored to be back on here with y'all. How's everybody doing? I see people are popping on Facebook. They're sharing the video. But for some reason, I'm unable to see that through my camera app. So, I'm just going to have to trust my delegates to handle me. You can handle, hear me well on uh, Periscope. <clears throat> and I'm hoping the connection is good. Uh-oh. Somebody got a football game on. Yes, loud and clear. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I want to do a little check-in, so let's see who's on tonight. Hello, everyone. That was wild. What was wild? <laughs> Good evening. I'm so glad y'all came on tonight. I'm on here tonight at the mercy of my dear, beloved Integrity Force. My dear, beloved Integrity Force. I think she started sending me um, threats and um, setting up other web pages and sending me threats that she was going to steal my dog and my granddaughter if I <laughs> and my firstborn child if I didn't get on and do a detox. Basically, what Integrity Force was telling me, y'all, is that she's detoxing from the detox if I don't hurry up and get on here. So <laughs> she don't make threats. She make promises. And that's why I love you. I love y'all for I love you for the encouragement. But I wanted to get on. I do have something I want to talk to you about. Um, I've been getting questions in. I've been doing a lot of counseling and also a lot of preaching. So my time on uh, the broadcast has been minimum. That's why I picked January to do the 30 days consecration that we do. Because January is so uh, dead for work, per se, in the New England region. Because it's so cold that um, people aren't really having conferences and um, conventions and meetings up this way. So we're in the house, you know, pretty much January, February. So it's a good time to do our consecration of soul detox. And I can commit to that. It does get a little bit busier after March. And, um, you know, preferably things have slowed down for me where I can get back on weekly. I'm praying already, seeking the Lord on um, what we're going to do for January 2019. So it's so good to have y'all on here with me. I love y'all so much. I miss you. 
Life isn't the same without y'all in my life. Hello, blessed apostle. How about yourself? Um, so it's just good to be here with the people, the true, real people of God. So I do have a lesson I want to talk about tonight. Hopefully we can get to it. I uh, have people send in questions to me as I have started to say, great, because God is good. That's why we can say we're great. <laughs> and um, all right, I'm seeing names now. I see on Facebook, Katrina, Chevelle, Priscilla, Chanel. Hello, beautiful, beautiful people of God. Good to see you. All right, Apostle Terrell, holla. Um, so yeah, I wanted to get on here tonight. I've been doing a lot of um, detoxing, a lot of soul detox. <laughs> and um, counseling, not a soul detox, counseling. And I've been getting a repetition of some questions. So I thought tonight would be a good night. Hello, Angela, Elaine. I thought tonight would be a good night to um, bring up one of the questions that seem to come up pretty much in um, maybe 50% of my counseling sessions. And you will be surprised, um, one of the topics is jealousy. How do I cope with jealousy? How do I recognize jealousy? Um, one of the um, biblical people that we can talk about is um, Joseph. You know, he suffered jealousy at the hands of his own family. So people tend to not believe in jealousy or want to believe in jealousy within the family because it's just hurtful and the love, the emotion that we have for family can blind our senses to not believe that you can have jealousy within the family. So when I say family, I like to spread it a little broader and uh, think about your church family, your job family, um, the, the car commuter family, um, the girlfriend family. You know, there's different sets of family, especially nowadays, that we can broaden it uh, wider than what Joseph had dealt with. But jealousy is real. And mind you, jealousy is almost like hatred, where you are not going to hate someone that you really don't care about. So there's something there that's provoking um, this emotion from us. Hello, Marissa, you owe me a text message and I need it before I'm off this phone tonight. Yvette Anderson, Mary Powell, hello, good people. Bless y'all so much for coming on tonight. So jealousy is real. Um, if you can, just by a show of hands on here, y'all know the little emojis, Show me how many of y'all believe that you have suffered at the hands of jealousy of someone else in the family. How about on in the family? Right on time word, Apostle. I'm already getting feedback. Jealousy within the family. If you have suffered through that or you believe that this may be part of what's going on in your life, you know, we're quick to say they're jealous of me. But I'm asking you all for real tonight because I have no emotional attachment to to uh, what's going on in your family. I'm, I'm simply here trying to bring a detox to get our souls right, not just for Jesus Christ to fill us, not just for the soon coming King, but so that you can live on this earth and have abundant life. My family was never close enough for that. See, that's exactly my point. Angela, Elaine, Nisi, there's a few people already saying, Chevelle, Natasha, Cherie Barnes, Reverend Cherie. Good evening, Corindus. Um, jealousy is real. And in a lot of the counseling sessions that I've had, I've dealt with um, a lot of mother-daughter jealousy. Can you believe that? Father and son too, but right now my client base for men, I'm like 80% men, 20, I mean 80% women, 20% men in my counseling. Um, so that's why the statistics are a little higher in men. Um, I think you've got to hit your keyboard and you know with a smiley face and all that is, you'll see the hands down there. And um so a lot of women are hurt, they're embarrassed, they're ashamed to say that I think my mother is jealous of me. You know, is that possible? Do I sound crazy? Um, what kind of person am I that I would actually say something like that about my mother? Um, you know, I'm embarrassed to say. Um, I don't know how to say it. I hear all of these things in my counseling sessions before they get around the bush because this is a common mindset that we have. Um, somehow we've learned that the truth is good, but not when it comes at the cost of hurting feelings. So we've gotten to a place where we will relinquish the truth or disqualify the truth or decide that the truth is not important in certain situations because it's going to hurt mama. It's going to hurt my sister. It's going to hurt my spouse. So we tend to act like, you know, there's, there's conditions to the truth. 
So when we can't speak the truth, we can't live in truth, we can't be the truth. So sometimes in counseling sessions, it can take me three sessions before I can just get someone to say, I've got to ask you something. One of the things that I share in my sessions is no judgment zone. There you go, Apostle. No judgment zone. This is a no judgment zone. I don't care if I'm your pastor. When we're on this phone, when I am counseling you, I am not your pastor. I am a counselor. So let's let's leave out the church. Let's leave out all that other stuff that you are involved in. And let's talk about your soul. What is it that you're fighting with, dealing with, with trauma? Have you dealt with? Allow me to uh, allow me to be a practitioner of the soul and help deliver you, get you set free so that you can live a better life by telling me the truth. But the only way you're able to do that is if you can separate me, if you know me, or separate me if I happen to be your pastor. Some can do that. Some cannot do that. You got it, sir. And um, so by the third session, most often, sometimes longer, but the majority by the third session will say something to me like, okay, you said this is a no judgment zone. You said this is my hour and it's about me and I don't have to dot I's and I do not have to cross T's. I'm telling you about this right now so y'all know what the counseling is about. Yes, it is. Boy, is it. And um, so I need to say something to you and don't, don't think ill of me or wrong of me, but I think my mother's jealous of me. Is it possible? Can my mother really be jealous of me? And the answer to that question is always quite possibly because I don't know your situation yet. As we begin to talk, I will uncover and tell them that it is not unusual. It is not, um, it's very common. Um, we've told the, the, the um, what is it, the fairy tale or something on Cinderella and it happened to be with a stepmother, but it's still a mother. And jealousy with a stepmother can be even more prevalent with your natural mother. We like to pick on the stepmothers and the, the blended families and all that. But jealousy can be very prevalent. And one of the reasons that I found out is if mom isn't fulfilled and if she isn't, um, if she hasn't accomplished what she has wanted to accomplish this far in her life, she will grab hold of your life, your style, how you dress your friends, um, your education. I know mothers that have gone back to college and wouldn't help their children get through college because they made it a priority for them to get their education first, which I think is wrong. My maternal instinct says to edu educate your kids first, get them out the house. You know, I chose to have them. It's not their fault. And then this life is mine. But you get a lot of competitions. I've had girlfriends who mothers started calling us and inviting us out and inviting us over. And our friend would come in the house and see her girls in the house with her mother and look like, what is up with this? And we thought she was going to be there. We had no idea that mama was setting us up for her own self. So jealousy is real. It's very prevalent in um, life. It's very uh, strong within networks. And it is very common within families. And it is very popular in mother-daughter or father-son relationships. So if you've questioned yourself on that, don't question yourself any longer. If you sense it, more than likely it is already true. I want to talk about a couple of things and I probably won't get to it tonight, but in the next session when I come back on either later this week or uh, next Monday night, I'll give you a few pointers to look out for. Just a little tick list, maybe about five or six little points and have you just compare these points with your relationship that you're questioning and see if this problem is yours. Now, I, I, I'm very careful to go here because I am a protector of God's church. I believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Um, I love his church. Now, his people, we do make it difficult, but I love his church. I love the purpose for his church. I love the healing that comes through his church. Though, again, us people can make this process a little harder, but it doesn't take away from the fact, the purpose and the vision of the church and what it is intended to do is perfect in its nature all by itself. Now, with that said, I will say this. There are also some times when your pastors can be jealous of you. No, I'm probably not going to say any more outside of that, but it does happen. And if that is the case and you do not feel the release in you to leave the church, um, you just need to figure out how to work with the head leader. See, often, y'all, come on now, often, 
We will leave a trace. I'm going to put myself in. I could say y'all, but I'm not going to sit with my guns like this. I'm going to sit with them like this. We'll be pointing at both of us. M most times, we will leave a great church with a great leader over not so great people. But what do you do when you have a great church, great people? That's right, they're human and they have emotions and we have healings that we have not um, um, had yet and we're, we're leading but we're still hurting in some areas. We haven't, you know, the church is, is, is just like the culture of uh, a lot of black and Hispanics where we don't believe in counseling and psychiatrists and, um, and um, therapy work and counseling work. So we stay away from those things. And the church has stayed away from it for years when the church was the one who originally initiated it. Premarital counseling came through the church. Family counseling came to the church. Before it hit Oprah and Iyanla and Dr. Phil and all these other centers we have in our neighborhoods. This stuff all came through the church. What happened was, as things hit and, 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 and our enemies of the church um, had its way, counseling started to, to take place outside of the church and had her, her growth and her opportunity and hit the marketplace and thank God for it. Okay, we'll leave it at that. However, um, with counseling, it seems as if the church somehow has been blindsided and thinks that she is ex exempt from needing counseling. I happen to believe that pastors should be in counseling just like I believe married people should be in counseling. I don't think we should wait till the road gets rough or until we hit a mountain or until um, there's a water that we can't pass through. I believe that prevention medication and preventive counseling is a very good health check-in that we all show have. Um, a lot of leaders, deliverance ministers included, um, need to go through deliverance. Why? Because when you're dealing with so much of that, these things, if you will, these spirits, they get attached to us. And when things begin to, what some of the terms we use is hijacking spirits and oppressive spirits. When these things are there in our life and they're playing with our finances and messing with our family and, you know, causing us to lose things and causing promotions to slip out of our hands and so on and so forth. We are always told that the deliverer has to go through deliverance constantly, yearly, yearly to say the least. And I believe because of the weight and because of the the, the, the rise of dysfunction in our American churches, pastors need to seek way more counseling, not that we receive, but that which we think we don't need. Our marriages are being hit. Our families are being split. Our churches don't see the power of God. The leaders are tired, weary. Leaders are, uh, are portraying the whole fivefold ministry in one pastor being the priest, the missionary, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, and the teacher. I already said the pastor. So we're carrying a lot of weight, wearing a lot of masks, trying to balance out the scales, and this stuff is taking us out. I believe that if the church would grab onto this method, there'd be far less suicide in pastors if we went to someone in a non-judgment zone and, and begin to share these things. Look, I'm having, um, I, I want to walk out of my family. Um, you know, I, I, I want to leave the church. I'm having uh, homosexual thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm feeling like stealing money because we got money problems at home. If we had a place that we can go and be honest about these whispers that come in our mind, I believe the church would be stronger. The leadership would be stronger. The foundations would be stronger. I believe suicide will be cut down to an extreme minimum, but it's not going to happen if we have to be an island all to itself, a man all to himself or a woman on an island to themselves. We need counseling. And as a culture of black and Hispanics, we need to stop it and we need to receive what God is doing in this earth and what TV is showing y'all in this earth, that people are broken, families are broken. We've had too many secrets we've had to keep. Dysfunctions have grown and spawned from all the secrets that we've had to keep and we need help. And there's nothing wrong with that. So yes, jealousy exists. Yes, jealousy exists in the family. Yes, jealousy exists between um, parental um, and child relationships. And yes, it definitely exists. Thank you very much. It definitely exists in siblings. But what I want to talk about, I, I wish I could show you this um, video, but I haven't quite figured out how to work this camera yet that I have set up in here. That's right. And that's scripture. Confess your sins one to another 
And you know, when we think of sins, we think it's sins that we, we've committed. What about if it's just the sins of the thought? The thought of a sin. Go to someone and talk. Look, I, I'm thinking about cheating on my wife. I'm thinking about cheating on my husband. And uh, it's not so, it's a road that I can't afford to go down. I got too much to lose. Who do we talk to? Oh, we don't even have those thoughts. So we, God knows we ain't going to talk to nobody about it. Are y'all with me tonight? Dysfunctions. Come on, Apostolic Evangelist Beverly Vaughn. Absolutely. So um, there's a video I really wonder. I wonder if I turn this around. Can y'all see it? Let me see. Let me see what I could do. I, I uh, recorded this because I wanted y'all to watch it. Hold on. See if I can get it big enough where y'all can see it. And it just gave an example of a mother sharing from a popular movie, I'm sure most of us have seen, sharing that she was jealous of her daughter. And um, Periscope, I'm going to try to show it to y'all next. Somebody says, with you. Thank you. Um, jealous of her daughter. But her jealousy, in a sense, was in a good way because she believed that, um, let's see. Oh, I think I, I figured out how to do this before. I'm going to bring it down. Stay with me. See if I could make it happen. And um, the jealousy was in a good way because um, she told her, I was always, always jealous over you on the great things that you did. And not the type of jealousy that hates, but it's the type of jealousy that stays inside and says, I wish I you know, would have done things like my daughter did when I was that age. The jealousy really did not have an action to it that uh, attempted to sabotage her daughter's life in any way. But it's still an honest statement that she made. So you may not be able to see it. I'm trying to zoom in on it. But um, you, you should be able to hear it at least. Let me get it here. Come on. Let's see. Hold on. I'm going to try to get it up for y'all. get in my circle. Hold on, y'all. Let me rewind it. Try it one more time for you. And I'll get it back within my little diagram that I'm able to get on here with Nevo. Hold on. Don't give up yet. Bring it a little closer. Bring my box over a little bit. Okay, now we're working something. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can do it now. I'm getting me a big screen for the back wall. Could y'all hear it? Tell me if y'all could hear it on Facebook, Mevo. Would y'all be able to hear it? I'm going to try to get it now for Periscope. Um, somebody tell me what movie this is. Do y'all remember what movie it was? But this mother saw her daughter in a rut. She was trying to figure out what was the rut. And then she began to let her daughter know that how you're acting right now, this isn't you. I'm not used to this. And it almost sounds like her mother never really encouraged her. But in her statement of confessing that she was jealous of her daughter, she was letting her daughter know, you need to get up and do something about your situation because this ain't you. I've always been jealous of the fact that you do that. And that was her way of encouraging her daughter. But let me see if I can get y'all to hear it on Periscope now. I'm trying to get a big movie screen so that I can have my TV behind me and we can watch everything I want to show.
Loving basketball. Loving basketball. Y'all guessing it on Periscope. Amen. She went and let her daughter know that I felt like he could do better because what I thought he could do better with was you. But before that, I hope that you were able to hear that she admitted, I've always been a little jealous over you, over the fact that you were this good, that you did have it going on this well. Jealousy exists. And it's not just with the stepmother. <laughs> it's not just Cinderella. This thing exists. Now, let me just check in. Can't really hear it. Okay. Um, can y'all hear me on Facebook? Periscope, can y'all hear me before I keep going? Only got a few minutes left on here. Got about 15 minutes left on here. Let me just know if y'all can hear me. Yes. Thank you, Apostle Terrell on Periscope. They can hear me. The fight in her. That's right, Misha. Her mother was always jealous. Thank you, Angela Elaine. Her mom was always jealous of the fight in her. And there may be some moms on here tonight where you may have to be honest and admit, I've had some jealous issue with my child. Can hear me fine. Good. Facebook, are y'all there? Can y'all tell me if you can hear me? Are you there, Facebook? Before I move on, Periscope is one and done on it tonight. I can hear you. Thank you, Pastor D. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Minister Kareem. I'm, I'm seeing y'all names now. Thank you very much, Newman. My new baby on here. Thank y'all, Yvette Anderson. Good. So let's just talk for a moment. And the next time I get on here, I'll give you some key checkpoints to find out if you're bugging or is this normal? Does this person, I'm going to stick with the mom for this teaching, but you may have to weigh out, balance the scales about the person in your life that you're wondering if there's there any jealousy about. Now, sometimes we be bugging and a lot of times we classify so many issues in one general category. Oh, they just jealous of me. When they're not always just jealous of you, they're just not being honest with you about what the real problem is. So I'm not going to help you classify everybody's jealous of you, but I'm going to break it down and give you some points to find out. All right? So let me just read a couple things to you here. There is a such thing as called narcissism. I've taught on it once slightly. Um, I do minister on it a lot in my soul detox counseling calls. Um, but there is a true thing in narcissism, and it is uh, in men and women. It's, it's almost like Jezebel. We think Jezebel is always female, and we think narcissistic only belongs to men, but it's not true. They are not gender specific. They do not discriminate. They will go to male or female. And there's a such thing as narcissistic mothers and narcissistic women. So narcissistic mothers may perceive that her daughter as a threat. Your mom or this person that you're questioning may perceive you as some sort of a threat. Nothing you've done. It's their experience of you. It's their perception of you through an insecurity in them that you are a threat. I'm going to help you handle jealous people because I'd rather see you win one than lose one by saying, oh, they're just jealous. You can actually help someone come out of jealousy and become a very important blessing in your life. But you have to be able to recognize the jealousy, okay? If attention is drawn away from your mother, the, the child or the adult child may suffer some sort of retaliation. This parent may begin to put you down. And if you're a child, uh, you know, under 18 years of age, may even offer some punishments in your life. If you're over 18 years of age, they may offer some punishments in your life of the adult status. Something like... Um, calling your brother or your sisters more than they call you. Forgetting your children's gifts on Christmas, but getting some of the other grandkids some gifts. Am I speaking to anyone? Um, may be there to help other people out with money, but never seem to want to help you and your household out with money. There's adult punishment, mind games, that I call it, um, that they'll play with you because they can no longer put a paddle on you or or tell you you're in your room for two weeks. They can't do that. So they do the adult punishment. The passive aggressiveness is what it's called. So the mother can be jealous of her daughter for many reasons. Here's some of the reasons. Her looks, her youth, 
material possessions, accomplishments, including the fact that she's married and mom may have never gotten married or never have had a successful marriage. She can be jealous over your education and even the young girl's relationship to the father. Do y'all hear me? Some mothers can be jealous over the relationship you have with your very own dad, what you deserve, what God intended you to have. He put that man in your life to be a reflection that you should settle for nothing less than that level of man for the entirety of your life. It's a comparison chart for you. And mom's going to be jealous of that relationship that you have with your dad. Oh my God. I know I'm talking to somebody on here tonight because this is a true thing. This jealousy in particular is difficult for the daughter as it carries a double message. What is the double message? Do well so that your mother is proud, but don't do too well and outshine her. And when this happens in our lives, most women will have a fear of success, not a fear of failure. Failure, she does very well. Failure, she may even cause on herself. Self-sabotage because she cannot succeed because if she succeed, it costs too much. Mommy turns on me or she may spiritualize it and say, you know, demons start attacking my life when it ain't really demons. It's just the insecurity or the jealousy of your mother. Come on, I hope I'm not stepping on toes tonight, but if I do, I got praying warring angels on my side that's going to pray for me. So this, this sets up an identity crisis early on in, in this child or adult child's life because you are told that you've got to do well, but never do better than your mother. Kind of like how the church has tricked a lot of us on when they were insecure in their gifts and callings, telling you that the student is never greater than the teacher thinking that you were always going to be the student and they were always going to be your teacher, not knowing that roles can reverse. Come on, somebody. Roles can reverse. I may be a teacher on here tonight, but tomorrow night I may be on your periscope and you are the teacher and I'm the student. So the roles can reverse. The teacher is not always the teacher and the student is not always the student. So we are told, you know, dummy down. Don't do too well. Don't go too high. Don't succeed too far because I'm not going to ride with you if you outshine me. Some people love you as long as you stay their level. You know, I had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of friends when I didn't serve the Lord. But when I began to serve the Lord and I stopped drinking, I stopped sexing, I stopped smoking, I stopped buying clothes for everybody so we could hit the nightclub, I stopped getting the rental cars, you know, I stopped being whatever it is. Or, or being that codependent partner in these codependent girlfriends' lives and hitting the streets in the club with them, lost the friends. Because some people will only appreciate you at the level that you stay at with them. If you shall grow or outshine them, they can't handle it. So they'll either pull back, completely disappear from your life, or have an issue with you because you've changed. You're not like you used to be. I like how you used to be. Jealousy. And it is real. And yes, it can happen within families and within the mother-daughter relationship. Absolutely. Let me continue on. I've got a few minutes left of y'all time tonight. While many people believe that to be envied could be a desirable, powerful experience, in reality, being envied particularly by one's own mother, is unnerving and awful. It is awful. It makes life awful. The daughter's sense of self is canceled by disdain and criticism from her mom, either ambush type, meaning I didn't see it coming, we were out having a good day, or it could be sniper type, she hit along on the sides and wait for you to have a weak moment when you became vulnerable and you begin to share with her, you know, you're having problems in your marriage or the kids are acting up or you're getting picked up on your job or problems. And all of a sudden, mom wait as a sniper to tell you, well, this is why they picking on you on your job. This is why you got problems with your husband. And this is why your kids don't respect you. And it came up as a sniper. She hid and waited for information or she ambushed you. Doesn't even give you a chance to say, mom, I'm calling you because I need my mother today. How many of y'all call your mother because you really need your mother today? Not the teacher, not the minister, um, um, not the critical mom, not the mom who wants to see you do good things. Just a mom that you could be natural and real with. My mom has been 
gone since I was 17 years of age, and I still desire to pick up the phone and call her. Isn't that something? Unfortunately, God has not providing a, provided another mother for me. There's, there's no one that has uh, walked in her shoes and have filled that void. But I'm blessed to know that there are many that call me mother. And I give my ear and my time and my lap and my shoulder um, and my wisdom to those that call me mother because I know deep down within my soul the desire that I have that I wish I could still pick up that phone and call my mother. Mother has a place in our life. Giving no credit to God if you don't want to, but God set up the perfect dynamic of the family so that we would have a balanced scale and a lot don't know how to mother. You are exactly right. So the, this causes the daughter's sense of self to be canceled because of the disdain and criticism. Her goodness is questioned or labeled or made light of, which causes her to feel like her reality as a person is obliterated. Can't be real because you're scared of the negative judgment. Absolutely. Cinderella and her sisters, the envied and the envying. As the daughter analyzes what her mother appears jealous about, she comes to feel unworthy. It makes no sense to the daughter that her own mother would have these bad feelings about her. The daughter tries her best to make sense of the situation and decides that something must be wrong with me. Now, I'm talking about somebody starting out at seven, eight years old where the discernment has kicked in. There's a place now where their, their senses are showing them. I, I'm picked on more than my sisters. I'm picked on more than my brothers. You know, a lot of children grow up and say, I had to have had a different father. Not that I've ever questioned that we may even look different, but the fact that I was always treated differently than them. There's women that I counsel to this day where their siblings have had princess bedrooms and they've had to sleep on the couch. My heart even hurts to think that someone could lack such a maternal gene inside of her to even do that to anyone's child, never mind her own. So they grew up with this failure and this sense of completely, listen to me, y'all. I'm talking about 30, 40, and 50-year-old women. Well, one was 28. 30, 40, 50-year-old women who to this day is still trying to get mom's approval and mom's affection um, mom's love and still gets her rejection. Y'all with me tonight? I desire to talk to my mother too. My mother only calls me when she needs something. Well, y'all on the right page and I'm teaching the right stuff tonight. I still see someone on Periscope saying still. All right, let me go on. Um, I have found that daughters of narcissistic mothers typically find it hard to discuss envy from their own mothers. I literally go through this day in and day out and find it even harder to come to terms with it. They will, they'll bring it up again next week. I'll teach them about it. I'll teach them about the Cinderella theory. They'll give me an example. Um, sometimes I don't even let them give me examples. I say, before you go in and, and make any statements about your mother, let me tell you the basic five principles to look for. I use the five fingers to look for on your hand to know if anybody's jealous of you. And I give that to them in our sessions. And they're like, my mom's all five of them. I said, so now you haven't told me anything about your mother. I ain't prophesying nothing. I'm dealing with the, just this, the regular psyche nature of humans. And I'm telling you that this is it. You're telling me this is what you have with your mom. But next week we're back on the phone again. And you're still questioning that you cannot believe it. It takes a long time for it to set in. And so they usually do not see their own goodness because of this identity issue enough to recognize maternal envy for what it is maternal envy can y'all put that on the screen tonight how about when we hang up you tag somebody in this video or you inbox them in messenger if you're afraid that this is so personal that it may cause some embarrassment to them tell them i want you to listen to this about maternal envy she's going to do part two in a few more days or by next monday i want you to get involved in this we've talked about this before you've heard about it before maternal envy so they usually can't even see their own goodness enough to recognize maternal envy for what it is. Instead, they believe that they have yet again done something wrong. If they have internalized the not good enough feeling, they don't see themselves as someone anyone could envy. 
The whole situation is crazy making for the daughter's feelings. It creates hurdles to healthy development and the building of a sense of self. She has a, a lack of self-confidence, a lack of self-esteem, all because there's no identity of who she is. Envy allows the insecure mother, come on, hear me now. Envy allows the insecure mother to feel temporarily better about herself. See, it's not just about you. You're prey, P-R-E-Y. You're prey for her. Um, she knows that you're the one uh, uh, child that will always cater to her. Um, the one who's a little more loving than the rest. The one who doesn't talk back like the rest. The ones who have not moved on with their life because you're a little more closer to mom. Maybe you need the affections of a mom a little bit more. But she knows this about you, so you become prey, P-R-E-Y, in her life. So she uses you, uses you, because it's not about you. She uses you so that she can feel temporarily better about herself. When she envies and then criticizes and devalues her daughter, or whatever situation that you're trying to compare this to, she diminishes the threat to her own fragile self-esteem. That's what this is about. Another woman or another person's fragile self-esteem. Envy is a powerful tool in the narcissistic's repertoire. And you will see this in the mother's interactions with other people as well. But when directed at the daughter, it creates a feeling of helplessness in the daughter and a painful life of self-doubt. Can't even make a decision. Although there are many ways in which a mother's jealousy creates hurdles for the daughter. There are many ways. But altogether painful. Because there's a pain now of being unloved. There's a pain now that she has to deal with of being unloved. Doesn't matter how many beds she goes in and out of. How many different sexes or genders she changes in and out of. <clears throat> there is always this pain of feeling unloved. Most often, um, they'll join an organization. They'll have some... Um, um, friendships, they'll have some domestic relationships, um, pastoral relationships, and they can never receive love because the first person instituted by the creation plan of God did not portray to them the security and safety and trust that love is supposed to bring. Throughout their adult life, they will still, still suffer with who can they trust, who really loves them, what is love, am I even lovable? Stuff is deep. So the pain of being unloved. In all cases of maternal jealousy towards the daughter, the daughter is left with the little support for who she is as a whole person. Envy is like an anger that destroys a young developing woman or man. It is terrifying for any child at any age to be at the hands of a jealous, narcissistic, envious parent. Some say... It is even normal at some level. Mothers are often reaching menopause when their young daughters are developing into beautiful young women. And some say that it may be normal, could you believe this, for mothers to have some touchy feelings about aging. It's important to understand that the poisonous, corrosive envy felt by narcissistic mothers is not normal. This is not normal and it is not acceptable. The bar is raised. It is destructive. The challenge for daughters of narcissistic mothers is to learn how to recognize and cope with abnormal maternal envy. There is nothing about this that you should tolerate or accept. And I've seen grown women who are rebellious, who've got slick mouth, who can cuss you out backwards, forwards, and in 32 different languages. But when it comes to that mother, fear dominates them that they become childlike automatically, instant, right in your very face. Because they have been under this narcissistic control for so long. And that's not the way the relationship is supposed to be. The Bible tells us, I told you I follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, my personal choice. The Bible tells us that when you honor your mother and your father, you will have a long life. That's the intent and plan of the relationship. And he even tells the fathers, don't provoke your children to anger. This relationship has to be submitted and it has to be appreciated. There has to be a strong leadership, but abuse is never accepted. 
Let me go on so I can wrap this up. A common pattern in narcissistic families is that of constant comparisons to other. Your mom or whatever dynamics you're trying to figure out, there's jealousy in it. Usually one of the signs is that there's always a comparison to other people. You're not like your brother. You're not like your sister. You're not like your girlfriend. You're not like auntie's Lulu's little kids. Um, you're not like um, the other girls in the church or the other girls in the class. There's always com constant comparison. You don't do things as good as. Um, your house doesn't look like it should look. And, you know, she has to come over there and always put the finishing touches on your house because you just don't keep it up right. And you just, you just don't handle your kids right. It's just always a constant comparison to others. Somebody's crying. And, Father, we pray for your Holy Spirit to begin to move on their heart, Father as this deliverance broadcast has taken place in these airwaves. Envy rears its ugly head in many other contexts as well. How does our family measure up to others and do we look good enough to the outside world? Oh my God. Children learn to do this and become adults who are always worried about comparisons. If this is you and you were raised by a narcissistic parent, Learning how to cope is a must and part of your own recovery. Did you hear me? Come on, I got to get ready to end. So let's end it on this. What is a part of your own healing? What is a part of the counseling sessions that we would have? What is a part of your own recovery? Learning how to cope is a must. How to cope with a narcissistic parent. You should write that down. Because if you do call me and set up sessions... Or if you do email me and say, you know, I'm working on this first step. Um, I really can't afford counseling yet. I honestly can't. Can you give me some pointers that you are able to give me without um, the one-on-one -on -one, um, relationship development that you really need so that you can understand both dynamics of the situations? So the first step is you must learn how to cope. It's a must. It's part of your own recovery. Confronting the narcissist does no good. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, are y'all out there? Did you hear me? Confronting the narcissist does no good. Now, you know the number one thing I always tell y'all to do is confront it, confront it, confront it. In this situation, confronting the narcissist does no good. You have to release yourself from their confusion and see the envy for what it is. What was step two? I just gave y'all step two. You have to release yourself from their envy release yourself from the confusion and see the envy for what it is so number one how to cope is a must for your own recovery 1a do not confront a narcissist two you have to release yourself from confusion and see the envy for what it is to do this you must recognize your own goodness and strength. Come on, I'm giving y'all more pointers than I planned on tonight. To do this, you have to recognize your own goodness and strength. That's right. Thank you for putting it up. Don't be spiteful or revengeful as that destroys you. Don't do that. That's not necessary. Do not let someone change your niceness. Don't say, you know, they think I'm a punk, so I got to change, or they're taking my niceness as a witness. Do not have someone else change who you are, especially the good that you do have. Do not let someone change that because of the way they are. Either remove yourself from the relationship or put these steps into practices. What I'm teaching you tonight is boundaries. I haven't even given you the checklist, but I'm teaching you boundaries right now. So to do this, you must recognize your own goodness and strength. That's right, the Gilberts. And don't be spiteful or revengeful as that only destroys you. The envy that is thrown your way does not belong to you. It is a part of the parent's disorder. Can I say it again? The envy that is thrown your way does not belong to you. You don't have a right to catch it, to gift it, to make it a part of your legacy. You have all right intents and purposes to reject it and send it back to sender. Because their envy that is thrown your way does not belong to you. It is a part of your parents or whoever the dynamic is of this relationship that you're trying to figure out. It is a part of their disorder, not your dis disorder. Can somebody post that? 
Hey, Prophet Barn, can somebody post that? It is not my problem. It is a part of their disorder. I want you to get that in your head because y'all keep putting yourself on cross for things that Jesus already died for. There's no reason, no reason at all for you to go through being spiteful or revengeful or gossiping or defaming anybody. There is no need to do any of that. This does not belong to you. It's a part of their disorder. Envy comes from people's ignorance of or lack of belief in or their own gifts. I'll say it again. Envy come from people's ignorance of or lack of belief in their own gifts. Thank you, Dawson. Thank you, Glory888. Thank you, Anya. That's right, Pastor D. Davis. Thank you. Let me say that last line again. I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. Envy comes from people's ignorance of or lack of belief in their own gifts. That's where it comes from. They see yours. They see you working yours. And they hate you for it. But remember, it's not even a hate towards you. They may not even know your name. They may have never had lunch with you. You know, y'all got haters like me. Never had a cup of coffee with you. Never sat on the phone with you. Never watched a broadcast. They just hear of some of the things that you're doing and they automatically hate you. You know why they envy you? You know why they envy any of us? Because it comes from their ignorance of or a lack of belief in their own gifts. Because if they had some knowledge of their own gifts, if they had some belief in their own gifts, they wouldn't have time to notice or even hate ours. It would be easy. It is. You can always tell people who are confident in the gifts that they have because there is no problem for them to promote you, to attend your conference, to uh, send an offering in of love, to send you a card that you're doing a great job, to lift you up privately or socially when they have a... Uh, um, a knowledge of or a belief in their own gifting. When people don't have that, that's where envy and jealousy comes in. And that's something. Well, that's all I'm going to give you all for tonight. I got to keep you all hungry. I'm going to talk when I come back on the effects of parental jealousy, how the developmental sabotage actually takes place. I'm going to talk about the emotional disconnect that has happened in you. And that is apparent in your relationships today. And you know they are. Like I heard one of the counselors say that some people are dead from the neck down. Their face looks like they're alive, but from the neck down, there's no feelings, no emotion, no stimuli. Because there's been an emotional disconnect because of this parental jealousy, this disorder. And then we're going to deal lastly with incest. It's all a part of it. Incest. The effects of parental jealousy, developmental sabotage, emotional disconnect, and incest. Would you believe that there are parents who are aware, fully aware that their children were being molested and they kept the molester in the house or they kept uh, hiring the molester to be a babysitter or they kept dropping the child off to the molester when they were aware of it and digging down to the root in the matter of things. It has been determined by psychologists that because there was maternal jealousy, they kept the child in the hands of that dangerous, pedophile, sick individual. Thank you, Glory, for the super heart. So I pray tonight for those who have been victims of incest, um, molestation within the family. I pray for you. And I pray that the spirit of the living God begin to deal with the deep recesses of your soul and your heart. A place where psychology a place where man, a place where love, a place where a book, a place where a conference can never go. Only the spirit of the living God can go into the deep recesses and wells, the essence of who you are, the soul of who you have become when God breath, breathed the breath of life into you. Only God, creator, can go into that place and heal that incest and that hurt that came into your life. I pray for that healing to play, take place tonight. I pray that as you sleep tonight, or some of y'all at work on third shift, that as you sleep tomorrow, that the Holy Spirit, the chief surgeon, would go in and begin to do a healing in your subconsciousness, just like he did with man when he formed woman from him. Put him in such a deep sleep state that he's able to do a surgery on him that man was not even able to recognize what was done. I pray for that to happen to you over the next 24 hours. 
that a healing begins to take place. I pray for a purging would manifest so that your mind, your natural experience can have a, 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 a natural experience that a deliverance has actually taken place on the inside of you. I pray for someone to talk to. I pray for pastors after God's own heart that you can be counseled by. I pray that some of y'all pick up the phone, invest in yourself. Stop going out to eat and getting your nails done, putting plastic acrylic on your nails when your inside man or woman is jacked up. There's nothing wrong with getting counseling. And we need to grow up and invest in those things in ourselves. I pray for you. I pray for those that are under the sound of my voice tonight in the airways that God has given me access to, that it will travel to even tomorrow and over the next few weeks and maybe over the next few years, that I pray for those that are under the sound of the anointing of God, not even under my voice, under the sound of the anointing of God, that God will begin to heal you from this disorder that does not belong to you, this maternal jealousy, this maternal envy that you have had to live under, where it's caused for a life of self-doubt, where it's called for insecurity in you, lack of self-confidence, lack of trust, marriages that aren't stable because you don't know who you are, unloved from the initial parents in your life that were supposed to give you the trust and the security that you needed to develop into a whole person. I pray for you tonight, and I pray for everyone on this earway, and I pray above all things, that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Please visit my website, www.suzannemhoward.com. Let's see if I can put it up here. Here we go. I think I'm getting it. I think I'm getting it. Let's see. Did I get it? I don't think I did, but I'll get it. I'm, I'm trying to learn this thing. Um www.suzannemhoward.com and, um, and also do me another favor. Ask me a question. Email me a question about it. Tell me your experience with this. Thank you for y'all posting it up on Periscope. Um, ask me a question. Share your experience with me. I will never read your name. I may share the story because I'm a teacher and I believe um, that we can all be taught by people's stories, life experiences, um, and I will never tell your name unless you ask me to. I don't even ask to tell your name. Most times I won't even ask what your name is. But share your experience, your testimony. Share uh, where you are today in this relationship that you recognize as having maternal jealousy and how you're dealing with it today. And um, let's, let's, let's use it for topical conversation the next time we come together. But remember that I prayed for you. God is a deliverer. And he is a deliverer though, to those who diligently seek him. Seek him on tonight in your workplace. Seek him on tonight before you go to bed. Seek him when you put your feet on the floor tomorrow morning. And tell him that I am deliberately seeking you. And I'm looking for prophetic insight and instruction and healing for this maternal disorder that has affected my life. And that I will always give you the glory. God bless you. I'll look for your emails. Again, my website is www.suzannemhoward.com. That's my website. Please send emails there. I prefer not on Facebook um, because there's so much spam comes in there. I can't even deal with all of that. But I love you again. I thank you for tuning in tonight. Keep your notifications on. Um, I may pop in again um, possibly Thursday night. And if I pop in on Thursday night, you want your notifications so you can keep up. Please take the time. Inbox someone this. Tell them I want you to hear this. I want you to check this out. So Detox is back on. I want you to be a part of it. Um, put it, tag it on somebody's wall, tell them Soul Detox is back at work. I need you to be a part of it with us this year. We're getting ready for January 2019, where we consecrate for 30 days together. Every night we meet and we come together for healing, deliverance, um, education, revelation, enlightenment, and we let God do what it is that he wants to do in our life. So I bless you, and I thank you so much for your time. Um, I see all the wonderful names come up on my replay. I will go and read your comments and I will reply to some of y'all. So detox is necessary to live. God bless you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night. <coughs>